Uh, as a host here at QVC, I'm supposed to be impartial. Uh, I can't be. This is my favorite series of plants of everything that we have had on the air this year. Because I think there really is a mindset of, of impact gardening. The monarch butterfly, one of the most beautiful butterflies on the planet, will only lay her eggs on one plant, and that's milkweed. Now, milkweed grows throughout central Mexico and most of North America as a wild weed, but it's not a pretty weed. It's leggy, it falls over, the flowers are, are pretty for a couple days and then they get a little dingy. So what our friends at Roberta's did is they started hybridizing milkweed to be beautiful. And this is also milkweed that doesn't get out of control. That's the caterpillar that hatches from the eggs and they feed on the leaves of the milkweed. They will not eat anything else. Now other butterflies will also be able to get nectar because this is a huge butterfly attractant. We may be within two years of monarch butterflies being listed to the endangered species list. If you plant this in your yard, the chances are you will see monarch butterflies this year. This collection has been remarkably popular. 26,000 sets have been picked up. Uh, I'll be honest, I picked up six because I want to make sure that that monarch butterfly, and they're going to be back in my area about a month from today. Court Walleen is with us. Court is as passionate about this as I am. Court, this is Impact Gardening. Good to see you. It, it is. It's Impact Gardening, not only for the beauty it produces, the uplifting of your soul that you receive from this plant, but it impacts the population of the monarch butterfly. Since the 1980s, the monarch butterfly population has dwindled 80%. Yeah. That's a lot. Let me give you an example. 80%. Say I had $100 in my pocket. Take away 80%, that's only 20 bucks. That's a lot of decrease in the population. And the reason is for so many different reasons, pesticides, climate change, we don't exactly know, but we need to plant this plant. This is the only plant that the female monarch butterfly will lay her eggs on, and the only plant that that beautiful caterpillar, and they are beautiful, will eat. Sandra and her yep. husband, yep. Adam, made a great video that we could possibly take a look at that shows that life cycle. So there is the caterpillar munching on the leaves. She collected it. Look at the chrysalis forming. It takes eight days for that chrysalis to hatch out like this, the monarch butterfly to hatch out. There it is, getting its wings in order. First time flapping, now watch this. It's gonna take off and she's gonna release it. And this is what you see. She, Dan, she when we said, were kids. She said that was one of the greatest experiences to share with her daughter. Yeah. Had they not had the escapee of the plant in their yard, they wouldn't have been able to witness that. No, so many children. When we were growing up, we would be out catching yes. monarch butterflies and we'd be out catching uh, fireflies. No yeah. more, the yeah. kids don't understand, but we can help that population. And you're getting four pieces. So you're getting four different colors. And like you said, they're all award-winning hybridized varieties that feed the monarch butterfly. So this is just one of the four you're getting. And I wanna show you, I planted this one that I got here into a pot like this. Yeah. And this is what you can get in about four weeks, Dan, they grow fast. And then this plant right here is what you can get all summer long because they're gonna bloom for you July, August, and September uh, they, every year. And these are these are perennials, yeah, exactly. Every yeah. year. So yes. the, the buffet never closes for the monarch butterfly. <laughs> No, only okay. in winter when they die, right, right, when they yeah. do die back and rest. But by that time, the monarch butterfly has flapped its wings all the way down to Mexico, and now they're on their way back. So we need these plants. So whether you live in a townhouse in New York City, 
or if you live, you know, in the suburbs or uh, the countryside, please do your part. Pick up several sets like Dan did, I do, and we can go through the images. I'll show you the four beautiful colors that you're going to get in this plant uh, collection today. And well, the, we'll we'll get Here to we the go. images. There's the orange. Okay. Yes, and that's called halo orange. I'm sorry, tuberosa orange. Look how rich and vibrant that is. They're full of nectar, and they do have a fragrance like rich honey. There is one of the butterflies that will come to uh, drink from the flowers, the nectar. It's the swallowtail. You'll get all sorts of butterflies. But again, it's the monarch that you see there that only lays its eggs on it and that the caterpillar only eats. And that's the pink, the beautiful Cinderella pink. Yeah, I like that. And that's the look I'm uh, getting in my backyard. I have an area just like that here in Pennsylvania with the trees. I'm bordered with that. I don't walk out there. I just leave it 100% for the butterfly population. And there's the white. It's a beautiful ballet white. Again, fragrant, full of flowers, July, August, September. And there, the most recognizable butterfly in the world. Beautiful black oranges, and it needs help. So do your part. Um, Court, be don't be tardy for the party. This is the <laughs> moment to pick them like up. Because yeah. your garden will become alive with butterflies, especially the monarchs and life and beauty and there is the yellow you're going to get also again it's four pieces that's called halo yellow michelle so had asked me a question on facebook because oh, the, the images that we're showing her these are all ground planted she asked if you could plant these in containers absolutely yes absolutely yes, yes. uh and yes. that and also gives you an opportunity i do all of my butterfly bushes in containers and that oh, and I, I do it for a very self-centered reason I, I'm selfish, okay? If this is my sitting area, then yeah. I want my butterfly bushes here. Yes. Where it's nice and close where I can see them. But I, maybe I don't have ground there. So containers no. allow you to put this wherever you want. So you can yes. do that. Uh, I love Court's idea, and next year, next year I will do this, I promise. I'm gonna take part of my pasture where I right now have my beehives, and that's gonna okay. be my entire butterfly and bee area. But that'll be oh, next your year. Yeah. This is the most popular plant that I can think of. 26,000 people have picked up a set. And it's not wow. too late to jump on that bandwagon. No. They're, they're beautiful Don't flowers. Be if you do it just because they're beautiful, then you'll enjoy it. But if you see one, one monarch butterfly on this plant in your own backyard, and by the way, the bees love it as well. In fact, look, the bees and the monarchs are together. Yeah, you'll, that's, that'll be your backyard. The bees will produce so much honey from the nectar of these. You're gonna be a happy uh, farmer, Dan. And you can grow, pick up Linda Vatter's baskets. Yeah. Oh my God, they'd be beautiful planted in those, which I saw earlier today. So this is the moment, your garden will be alive. It'll be a party of butterflies and pollinators, and you're really doing your part to help the population. But don't be tardy for the party. This is the moment to pick them up while we still have a few left. You know, we're gone in May, yep. and so, yep now's the time we do have our growing guide our gotta grow guarantee included with each one of the purchases it makes a great bill to ship to whether you live in a, in a new york city and only have a balcony plant this if you live in a suburb like i do in a townhouse plant as many as you can and if you live in a farm like dan dan like like you said just fill your pasture part of your pasture with these you'll be doing a great deed for your bees for the monarch and for your soul yeah, th that's exactly right. That is exactly the reason why I do it. Court, it is such a, a cool evolution of how these butterflies, they just know how to migrate. And, and yeah. it's a multi-generational uh, multi migration. There's no butterfly that can make it all the way from middle of Mexico back up here to Philadelphia. So it's their yeah. offspring that come, but they come. And every year they're there. We'll know in two years, if monarch butterflies are now endangered. We You're can right. turn that around by doing something as simple as planting the one plant they lay their eggs on. 
That's, That's it. And hey, gardening. So those monarchs need a source of food all the way up to get to Pennsylvania where you yep, live. So exactly right. Look, yep. you plant these in Texas, Oklahoma, Mississippi, wherever. You're helping Dan get monarchs in his yard. Thank you. I like that. Welcome. And they're then they fly as far north as Maine. They're wow. amazing, amazing little creatures. By the way, uh, Court and the entire Walleen family, they guarantee happiness yes. with their plants. Please tell us more about that. I'll be happy to, Dan. On top of